Welcome back everyone to a brand new video. Today I will be showing you step by step how I made this realistic but simple diorama. There is a good amount to cover, so let's get started. It all begins with a piece of insulation foam, and this one is 2 inches tall and 10 by 14 inches wide. First thing is to get our road paved, starting with pop dot tape, a ruler, and a sharpie. The road itself is 3.5 inches wide, which is a good size for HO scale. What I am putting down right now is the pop dot tape, which is similar to Woodland Scenic's paving tape, except in this case, it's a lot cheaper. As you can see on the right, I will be using joint compound for the road itself. Once the tape is down on all four sides, I can pave away. A large spatula makes this process a lot easier. Now we wait about 24 hours for this to fully dry. Once it is dry, we can remove the tape and reveal our nice clean road. To sand it down, I'm going to be using this fine grit sandpaper. All cleaned up and our road is ready to go. The next step is to paint all that pink foam away. Territorial beige is always my favorite for our earth color base. After that, I am gluing and placing down my road bed for the track. This is simply just a piece of cut out foam from one of those poster boards. The track will go on just like so. And if you are curious, the track itself is Atlas Code 83 track, which I've already painted. And I will show that step here in a moment. Next up, I decided to paint the road. I like to use this country gray paint color for my roads. As that dries, I go ahead and paint the roadbed since the glue is dry. I did also cut the edge of the roadbed at a slight slope for easier ballasting later on. Before we do lay the track, here's what I use to paint it. First goes the matte brown paint, then I kind of go back and forth with the matte black paint until I'm satisfied. Rust-Oleum camo paint works better, but I just didn't have any. Then using a Dremel, I cut the track to fit the diorama. Tacky glue will be used to glue it down. While that dries, I'll be putting down this 50-50 water and Mod Podge mix for the dirt coverage. This dirt is already sifted to a fine powder and mixed with grout mix. Time to paint on the glue where the dirt will go. Then using a small strainer, I place the dirt where I want it. The dirt does look a little bit more light in color now, but once it's glued and actually dried, it'll look more realistic. First I spray isopropyl alcohol, which makes the gluing a lot easier by not moving or beating up the dirt.
The glue is going to be the same Water Mod Podge mix from before, this time using a dropper for easy application. It is now the following day and everything is dry, and as you can tell the dirt looks a lot better. For ballasting the track, I'll be using this fine gray blend by Woodland Scenics. Using an old medicine cup, I pour some right down the middle. Then using a flat brush, I spread it out gently. You can kind of see how nicely it falls down the slope of the foam roadbed. Once decently spread out, you can tap the rails to help get some off the ties. Or you can just use your thumb to push any extra away. After I'm happy with the way it looks, I do the same process as we did with the dirt. Gluing straight down the middle at first makes this a lot easier. Then move on to the sides of the track. Before we do go on to the next step, I'll be touching up the road and also cleaning up this end of the track, which will include cutting that excess off. Now that that's complete, I'll be doing the double yellow lines for the road now. Here I'm cutting a piece of masking tape to about one tenth of an inch wide. Before we do place it, I mark down the exact middle of the road. That piece will go right down those lines. I then cut the rest of the tape in half and then I use the straight sides to go on each side of the tape we first laid. The color is just regular matte yellow. Of course if you do have an airbrush that would be much preferred and you'll see why here in a moment. Since I didn't do a good enough job of getting all the extra dust off from sanding, some of the paint peeled up. But after some touching up, it came out pretty nice and kind of has that used rough look, which actually looks better in my opinion. Chalkboard paint is what I'm going to use for the sides of this diorama. This will give it a nice finished look. I guess I didn't mention how to clean up the top of the rails yet. It is pretty simple, I just scrape it away with the end of a wooden dowel. It comes off no problem. Since the roads do look a little too new, it's time to weather them up a little bit. Using the gunmetal gray part of this kit, I gently go down the middle of each lane. There are a couple more things to do, but it's starting to take shape now. Next up is adding some greenery to the scene. I actually don't end up using the bushes because I felt like the grass was enough. This 2mm light green grass is going to be my choice for this project. To apply the grass, I do need to get some glue down first. This time it's just straight up Mod Podge matte. I brush it on as random as I can to make it look a little bit more realistic. So with the Static King, if you do actually use a power supply with it instead of just the battery, it works a lot better.
To get all that extra grass, I use a vacuum with a sock over the hose. This way there's little to no waste. After a couple passes, this is the final result. The last and final step is going to be to weather the tracks, just so they don't look as new. This time around I use more of that rust color to do so. And that is it. I now have a nice realistic display for any locomotives or rolling stock I won't be using. Of course I could always add some more detail, but for this first diorama, I just wanted to keep things clean and simple. The next one will be a lot more advanced, but we'll have to wait and see on that one. Of course if you do have any questions at all, please do drop them down in the comments below. And as usual, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one.